today we are going to talk about um, derived classes with resources before we actually start getting into coding the uh, coding the um, uh, a real thing that goes with actually derived classes with resources before doing something like this we are going to actually do a little test over here so you can see exactly what happens when you have rule of three implemented in a class in a base class and then in a derived class we're gonna see which one is getting called and what is being called so what I have over here is a very very simple class a base class that has a data in it the default constructor sets the data to B uh, the one argument constructor sets the data to whatever I want to set it to the copy constructor prints the message saying base and then puts the data that is being copied to show copy and then does the copying the copy assignment says base is assigned to whatever so it tells exactly what is being assigned to what the destructor shows the destructor base that so we know that the destructor is gone the virtual show shows the base the operator insertion operator inserts the base into O stream so it's a very simple class just has everything implemented so we can trace the execution are we okay down to this point all right Stephen Liu are you, are you with us Chion Abdul uh, if you don't have the uh, the uh, poll on you can simply activate your microphone and say yes and I see Shrey is still listen only and Nermat and Heide and Chion are still in listen only mode they hopefully they have the reason but that's okay all right so that's that now the next thing I want to do over here um, and another thing if anybody is asking a question through poll is this recorded as well so that I can check it later too yes Misato it is and if can you hear me one two three I think I got muted by mistake. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Yes. Yeah, so if you uh, if you have a um, a chat to a, a question that you ask, so uh, to sh to show you what's going on over here, that's it, because people don't understand why I'm saying this. Um, let me see if I can. Yeah, that is me. All right. So there you go. So uh, probably you can see me up there right now. Hello there. Okay. So if you look at this, I have this the, is the, the, the screen that I do the polls on. You see that? And this one is the screen that I have the chat on. So I see the chats over here. You see that? So if you see I am not replying to your chats, please uh, somebody tell me far that there's a question in the chat. So I'll reply to it. I'm going to turn off my uh, video so um, the real estate becomes bigger for your for your um, screen. All right. So please, if you see somebody ask a question in, in a chat and I didn't notice it, somebody remind me so I can actually reply. Anyways, so the base that you see over here, the base that you see over here is a simple class. And for the derived class, I did the same thing. So my derived class has its own data. This is a question mark if it's not set. The, the derived class sets the data of its own to D. So the data of derived class and data of shadow are two different things. Each one, they have their own information. The derived class, when it's set to a data value, what it does, it sets the base to the next one so if it's set to a base becomes b if set derive is set to x base becomes uh, y it passes the next character to the base and sets its own value to whatever it is and it has its own copy constructor and as you see it is copying only the d value and the assignment operator is only op copying uh, assigning 
uh, the D value it is not copying the derived value and that's on purpose I just want to write a standard thing over here and see what happens when we go through it uh, are we okay down to this point So the first scenario that we are going through now, the first scenario I'm going to go through now, is the scenario in which we do not implement the rule of three at all. So if I do not implement the rule of three, as you see, I didn't do it over here, and I didn't do it over here either. When I do not implement the rule of three in neither base nor uh, derive, because I do not have any resources outside of the base, everything will work perfectly, which means in main, as you see, I have a derive x created. Let me just bring it over here so we can see both execution and that one. Derive x is getting created. It is passing uh, y to, uh, it is passing y to, let me just come over here. It is passing Y to, to the data. So when I actually show them, you will see it says derive X, holy holding X base Y, and everything's fine and dandy. So I do not have any resources created over here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually copy the, the X and see what happens. So instead of showing it over here, I'm going to show it in a, in a function. And the function that I have is receiving the d by value so the function call will be as follows it's going to be show uh, d set to x so it's going to be show derived d set to x and because it is it, d is getting initialized using x the copy constructor of derive will be called because we do not we did not implement any copy constructor compiler will blindly get all the information in X and copy it in D therefore if I go like this it's gonna work perfectly still because I do not have any classes with resource over here so everything is working fine and dandy so but uh, the reason that we created this, so in here I'm going to say um, a, a no copy, no copy or assign dot cpp is implemented. Now, and, and let me just twist this, uh, move this a little to right. All right. So now what I'm going to do too much, I'm going to do, I am going to implement the copy constructor uh, of uh, uh, the copy constructor and assign and the rule of three of the base class, assuming that base class has some resources and the copying needs to be done manually. But I do not do that in the derived class. I want to see what happens when the copy constructor is called and walk through it and understand. So now I have inheritance. The base class is implementing the rule of three, but the derived class is not. If that's the case when it's running, I'm just going to go through. Actually, let me do two things. I'm going to create over here uh, derived and I'm going to call it uh, A. And I'm going to set that A to uh, a lowercase a, let's say. So that's going to create that one. Then I'm going to say over here, A is set to D. And I'm going to go C out A again. So what happens over here, I am doing two things, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, I am creating, uh, I am calling the copy constructor because it's being passed by value and in sideshow I am assigning one to another so the assignment operator is called I want to see what happens when the rule of three is applied for the base but not for the derive when I run the program this is what happens so first it is created there is no problem with that why is it not showing anything in here
Let me run it one more time. Okay. And bring it over here. Let's do it again. Okay. So it comes over here. Oh, because nothing is printed over there. That's very fine. So the RAV class is created. And now it's going to get copied. So as soon as I pass the X by value, as you see, the copy constructor of the base is called. And what happens over here, it copies the base and then it comes out back to derive and it's going to create an A, but it tries to show the D. And when we show D, what happens, what you see over here is that actually the X is copy two. So everything is perfectly good. If it was defaulted, you know that the default will be D over here. Because I don't have D, it means the X is actually copied. So I have no problem. So as a result, we find out if the base class of ours has resources and the copy construction is uh, copy construction is created for the base there is no need to implement the copy construction for the derived class everything happens automatically and perfectly there is no need for it so number one the very first thing that we found out over here is if the base needs rule of three and derive does not you do not need to implement the rule of three now let's look at the assignment and see what happens with the assignment now I'm gonna go to the assignment when assignment happens as you see it actually goes to the assignment overload of the base and sets base B to assigned Y to ass uh, and assigns and assigned it to Y therefore uh, um, the uh, base that was B in here uh, when it was created over here it was a so it becomes B that is overwritten with with Y and when it runs it actually runs perfectly so again when rule of three is uh, assigned for the derived one um, for the base one and derived does not have any uh, rule of three uh, it doesn't need if if the derived one does not have any resources and does not uh, apply the rule of three nothing important happens and we are good to go so if that's the case then uh, uh, everything is good and uh, in the destruction the things are getting destroyed properly because uh, the destructor is virtual so we are good to go are we okay down to this point so this one is going to be base with rule of three but not derived. So base doesn't have root of three, but derive has. Now, let's assume that, let's assume that the derived has its own root of three. So it is actually needed. So if I actually uh, have the root of three created for derive two. Now let's see how does the copying happen. Is everything okay? Does everything run properly? Uh, because I created the derived uh, copy constructor and derive assignment operator and derive destructor. And so everything is there. Let's see if copying happens properly or not. Now let's start. Now the derive is created, so the derive is created and it sets the, uh, the values of the base to y and the, uh, the derive one to x. Now x is being copied into d, so as soon as I do f11, 
it comes to the derived destructor and what happens it copies the value of the derived one you see derived one is getting copied then it comes back out and goes in and when we print the copy you will see that the base is not copied base is supposed to be Y but it's B so when you have the rule of three implemented for the derived one the compiler will not invoke the rule of three of the base it means everything becomes manual and it's your responsibility to do so again I repeat when you create the rule of three for your derived class the rule of three for the base class will not be invoked it becomes manual let's try it for the assignment operator now I have a <clears throat> that has B for base and A for the derive and I want to set A to D that has X and B if I do that what's going to happen when it comes over here it goes for the for the for the uh, uh, for the operator equal the operator equal of the derived is called and only the derived is assigned to X but the lowercase b of the base is not set to the uppercase of the b and therefore when we come out and we display we'll see that the base is not copied the base remains what it was so we are in trouble in this case so we need to make sure so again i will repeat over here saying if the derived class has rule of three or needs rule of three needs and implements the rule of three the base classes rule of three will not be invoked automatically and must be invoked manually which means <clears throat> when I am copying the derived I need to see how the base is supposed to be copied so in here what I will do I will <clears throat> because I need the copy constructor the standard thing is to say okay now I pass the derive to the base class as copy constructor so I'm gonna say base D I'm gonna pass the derive to the base because derive is receiving a base and a derive is a base the copying will happen only for the base part of the derive we will see it in a second and the exact same thing over here if the assignment operator is being called I have to call the assignment operator manually and say basis operator assignment receives a D so <clears throat> the assignment of the base will take care of the base part and the assignment of the derive will case they take care of the uh, derive part in here the same the base constructor copies the base part and the derived constructor copies the derived part now if I run this thing this is what happens when I come to the derive I create the derive now it's getting copied and as soon as it's keeping copied because in the initialization area I mentioned to initialize my base with D D is passed to the base and because the base is only seeing the base part of the derive it will see X therefore it will copy sorry it will see Y and it will copy actually the Y so that is being copied then it comes out to the construct to the derived one and the derives 
x will get copy to. So both copy constructor are called and when we come in here <coughs> and d is actually displayed, x and y are both there copied properly. For the operator equal, the same thing. When I come to the operator equal, it will set the derived data to whatever it is. So it's going to set the derive a to x, it overrides that one, but then it comes inside and calls the operator and over there it's going to actually assign the base part. And the base part is set to, and when it comes out we will see that a is now perfectly assigned to another one. Are we okay with this? <laughs> Rolgard, go ahead. What's up? Uh, I just don't really get it, um, how the copy happens um, between the derived class and the base class. Like, so yeah. I said that, you know, the copy constructor, right? There's no problem with that, right? Yeah. All I'm saying over here is that if you have a derived class out of a base class, and you need to implement the rule of three for the derived class, everything for the base class is your responsibility too. Nothing will happen automatically, which means when I'm copying the derived class, I have to take care of the copying of the base class myself. Okay. I have to tell to the compiler, hey, compiler, you should do that. You should call the derived one. I can do it any way I want. I can actually do something like this. Let me just show you. I'm going to copy this. So it's not that it has to be done this way. That's the standard way. Mm -hmm. The standard way is to just send the object that you're copying to the base one and the base will copy only see that one. So let me sh sh tell you this way. If I If this is my derived class, oh, that's not my derived class, undo. If this is my derived class, okay, the derived class has a base class in its belly. Do we understand this? Yeah. Okay. Now, if I pass, if I pass the object as a derived one, what the reference sees is this because it's derived therefore it sees the whole derived not the base one but if I pass the object of derived into a base class and therefore the reference is received therefore his reference is received through a base reference because it's a base reference that receives the derived one all the compiler is seeing would be this. It doesn't even see that mm -hmm. derived one. Therefore, the, the base part will be copied properly. Do I make sense? Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Good. All right. So that's, that's the case. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. I can say when the derived class, if my business logic says when the derived class is called, I want the base to be, I want the base to be uh, I don't know, uh, M. You can do that. You can call the def one argument constructor. But when you do that, when the copying happens, it's going to be M. It's not going to be a, it's not going to be, uh, the same thing as it was before. If you're, or you can say when the base is happening, I want, um, what do I say? What do I say? Uh, I want D dot M data, uh, plus one being passed to it. So you do, you do what the constructor does automatically, then it works the same way. It actually works and it copies and everything's fine. So you have many different ways, or not only that, you can actually do this. You can actually say, I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to call bases operator assignment and pass the D to it. That'll work too. So when the copying happens, copying you will use the assignment. Take a look. It says base assigned to this and derived. Okay. So instead of 
instead of actually copying it will assign that point you can do it many different ways what I'm what I'm the point that I want to make is the point that I want to make is that it doesn't matter how you do it when you are implementing the derived classes rule of three how the base is supposed to handle rule of three it's your responsibility you have to somehow implement it that makes sense the standard part is that when the derive is being copied copy the base when the derive is being assigned assign the base that's the standard way but hey uh, if you have another way of doing it by all means there is no problem with it you can do it the whole point is that when you are taking care of the rule of three in the derived class the base class is your responsibility are we okay with this all right so that's essentially uh, uh, so let me put it this way if uh, I, want to, I want to see yeah 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 nothing we, we covered all those things yeah so anyway so this is fine so that's that's all I wanted to say so now in here I'm gonna say C uh, derived rule of three implements basis rule of three dot cpp okay now now let's get into some real stuff so let me add first a utility thing over here so I'm gonna say add uh, existing item I'm gonna grab it from ZAA section since I have it over there I'm gonna go to November 16 I have the utils over there I'm gonna bring it from there copy that's the rule of three I'm gonna bring it here and drop it in here paste and ah there we go the utilities that I have over here it has two lower SDR CAD SDR copy a string copy all the good stuff that it's supposed to have they're all in there so so uh, uh, so we can uh, uh, so we can use it instead of the uh, string header file so that's my utils all right and uh, what else we need to do so I brought it over here and it's extends it with UT that I can use and what's the time it's uh, 12 26 because I want to do the real one right now I'll actually do some dynamic memory allocation all, the, all those good stuff let's uh, get 10 minutes break and I have to do some stretches um, uh, and then continue so uh, my back doesn't give up halfway through the lecture um, about five ten minutes break and we're gonna be back please remind me to could resume recording when uh, when I continue Great. <laughs> okay that was a good question that we didn't record so and anyways so what I'm gonna do now is to create um, 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 a class so I'm gonna add a class and I'm gonna call that class uh, uh, name okay so the class name of mine um, has the header file as such so I'm just gonna put the header file over here so the, the name of mine is something like this a very simple and straightforward let me put the CPP over here too. copy and I'm gonna put the CPP file and set it over here there we go so <clears throat> uh, who was the question who's who was the person who asked the question uh, me Misato. Oh, yeah, okay Misato okay uh, Misato am I pronouncing it properly yes perfectly so Misato, as you see, name now is dynamic. It has a dynamic name, right? Therefore, we need to have the default constructor created. Oh, sorry. Uh, copy constructor created, assignment operator created, and destructor created too. And I want everybody to be aware. Uh, just I don't know if I talked about it in the class or not. 
taking care of rule of three not necessarily means to implement the copy constructor assignment operator and destructor if your logic says that a name is not supposed to get copied the rule of three for this would be something like this so you say equal to delete and equal to delete and then you don't put any implementation for for the construct copy constructor and copy assignment this tells to the compiler that this object the objects of type name are not supposed to get copied or assigned to another one and if you do throughout your application compiler is going to give you an error so it's very possible that in some cases we ask you to implement the rule of three so the class is not copyable or the class is not assignable if that's the case the implementation is just setting it to delete are we okay with this so essentially so the rule of three for that class becomes assignment prevention and copy prevention which is with a delete which we are not going to do now because we want our name to get copied and I have all the stuff for the name over here set up so <clears throat> I have the assignment operator uh, I have the copy constructor and it's a very straightforward standard thing so um, when the name is uh, being set to a value I allocate and copy it it's in the utils in utils I have two functions for allocation one is allo and copy that receives a reference of a character pointer and sets the destination where it's supposed to do allocation in two to null then checks to see if source is null or not if source is not null then it does the allocation if source is null nothing happens and destination becomes two null two so that's that and then i have another one call it reallocate and copy what reallocate does it assumes that destination is already pointing to something if you want to reallocate it first deletes the destination then makes it null and the yada 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 so these two functions do the dynamic memory allocation for uh, do the dynamic memory allocation for my uh, what you may call it um, uh, characters available so in here makes my life easier I'm just gonna say when the name is set to a value allocate and copy if it's copying again allocate and copy into value from the value of the other name when I'm setting to another one I'm gonna say if this is not a self copy then reallocate which means first it's deletes and then uh, sets it so I have set it up the name over here as uh, deletes itself properly and I have a write which what write does over here is essentially uh, checks to see if a value exists if it does it prints it if it doesn't it prints no name and um, I have an operator insertion operator that uh, inserts the the uh, the name into the to the operator and also my name can be called but we don't know still what does it mean to call a name um, to call a name essentially means uh, if 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 uh, uh, um, if I want to call our friend uh, what was uh, I'm just trying to uh, Mrs. Misato so or Miss Misato so when I say when I when I when I want to say I had a student called Misato but if I want to call uh, Misato I'm gonna say Miss Misato that Miss is calling her using her label I don't have it so I'm not gonna do anything over here I'm gonna say I don't still know what are the rules and regulations of calling a person therefore uh, 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 I'm gonna set it to a pure virtual function therefore my name becomes uh, a an abstract base class doesn't make any difference if it's abstract or not what is important is that it has resources and it needs rule of three that abstraction is just an added spice to the example that I have now that I have the name I want to create a full name out of it so I'm gonna create another class over here add another class and that class I'm gonna call it full name now full name actually has a base class that is name so it inherits everything from name publicly and we're gonna click on OK and what name does what name actually has uh, rather is something like this so so the name of our 
uh, our the name of ours over here will be something like this and public and let's close it down and at the end I'm gonna say and if so that's my full name a full name is a name full name is a name that has a last name and yada 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 so uh, Misato are you with me yes this is where full name needs rule of three because it has resources it has only a pointer to the last name it needs to take care of it are we okay yeah yes all right so Thank you. you said how do we know that the derived class needs something it's if it has resources outside of its uh, stuff so what I need to do is in here is to actually implement all the good stuff that I have so I'm gonna come over here and create a, a, a full name over here so I'm gonna have my full name like this and as you see, my full name is still not implementing the call because I don't know how to actually uh, call a name. Now, if I want to test the name before anything, I want to test to see if the name is working properly. If I want to create a tester for that, for the name, the tester for the name cannot be written as easily as other testers because name by itself is an abstract based class so therefore if I want to create a tester for the name I need to create a class out of it first implement the call and then do whatever I want to do so to, to, to test the name this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create so uh, where is my name over here <coughs> So, uh, there we go. And again, this is an example, again, for you saying, do I need to create it? Create rule of three. As you see, now I create something called callable name. So, callable name is a name that can be called. And I assume that's the name that has a title. So, this one, do I need to create rule of three for it and worry if name is going to get copied or not? No, because it doesn't have any resources, therefore everything will be done automatically for the name. I do not need to worry about it. This class does not need rule of three. Okay, and also let me just come over here and comment everything over here for now because... Uh, uh, I just want to test my name. So what I did over here, I said a callable name is a name that has title. Um, it's defaulted, which means it's empty. Now callable uh, gets a title and a name, passes the name to the base constructor. Uh, it's not a copy constructor, it just wants to build the name and then copies whatever title that is we are giving into the title. The SDR copy in UT with the third argument is like SDRN copy but it automatically adds the zero at the end. So I wrote this one so we don't have to write the little thing at the end by ourselves. Um, what do I need to do? So for this, oh, a call. So I need to create a call. So I'm going to create the call for the, uh, for the uh, callable name so it can be instantiated. Now that I have done that, I can actually uh, test it exactly the same way I did the other one. See, in here I'm going to say void call and I'm going to pass the callable by value. Exactly like the base, base one that I did. Now I'm going to say callable master uh, Fred. And in here I'm going to say call N and I'm going to assign M to N. So two different things and then call M pass it by value and see if everything's working properly and when we run this program we'll see that everything works properly and it runs and yada 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 and uh, and it says calling mr. Fred and everything is set uh, assignment is done and uh, I have no uh, memory leak or anything relative to that are we okay with this tester program so this tester program do not does not need any rule of three 
because uh, it doesn't have any resources and we know that everything's called automatically if I do not implement them all right what do I have next so that's that yeah so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put over here name unit test dot cpp now let's go back to our full name now I have the full name and I want to implement that so what do I do I'm gonna take a look at it and uh, bring all the stuff that I need to do for this um, so let me just uh, create uh, the bodies for them one by one uh, I'm gonna go into full name dot uh, CPP because I know it doesn't put the namespace for me so namespace SDDS I believe that's the one we have is it as this yes so now let's actually create the body so that's one and that's two and that's three and that's the destructor and finally I'm gonna create the right there we go okay so let's go one by one and start implementing all these good stuff that we have okay number one we are going to create the constructor for the full name that has a first name and a last name so what do I need to do over here I'm gonna pass the first name to the constructor of name so I'm gonna say first name and I know it's gonna take care of it so I don't need to worry about it so that's that so the constructor of name will gonna take care of it now I have to dynamically allocate the last name into the name so I'm gonna say oh I need I need I need I need my uh, utils you you utils dot H that's what I need yeah so what I was saying is that I'm gonna say ut dot allo copy into M last name the last name that I received from here and therefore I'm gonna have my uh, uh, my full name created now I am creating the copy constructor so um, what do I do the first choice that I have is the standard which means I'm gonna pass the full name to the copy constructor of the base base is gonna take care of the copying the of the the f the name part of the full name then I'll copy the the rest of it myself so I'm gonna pass this to name and I'm gonna say FN which means now the name part is copied and after that I'm gonna say ut dot allo copy exact same thing like that M last name into FN dot M last name so F name will take care of that one I will take care of this one everything's uh, done fine and dandy are we okay with this all right now that we have done this let's uh, I see Vinicius Sohail Rehat and Abdul are quiet ones in class okay please uh, uh, join us anyways so now I'm going to do the operator equal for the operator equal what I'm gonna do operator equal is a function there is no initialization area over here so I have to do exactly what an operator equal is supposed to do saying if this is not equal to the address of f and so do the self copying protection and after that I'm gonna say return this now assignment uh, operator assignment is ready for me to rock and roll the very first thing I have to do in here to, is to take care of the name part so I'm gonna say name scope resolution call the names operator equal and set it to FN now that the name part is copied I'm gonna say hey UT reallocate into M last name FN dot M last name and I'm done so now the uh, the the assignment operator is copied and then after this what I'm gonna do is uh, 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 delete the last name so in here I'm gonna say delete and last name because I know that uh, the structures are virtual because it's virtual I know it's gonna go back and delete 
the previous one so I'm okay with that and for writing a full name what I need to do is first write the name and then after that check to see if actually M last name exists then I'm gonna in OSDR print a space to go one space later and then I'm gonna print M last name and return OSDR simple and straightforward okay so now I init I created a derived class out of my uh, base class that takes care of all the good stuff that I have now what I need to do is to actually write a tester for this how do I write a tester for this exactly the same thing as I did for the full name so what I'm gonna do in here I'm gonna uh, write uh, a class exactly like the other one um, in here I'm gonna say instead of this one instead of type callable name I'm gonna call it title the title name and the title name is gonna get a full name I do not need the name over here I just need the full name I think yes so I'm gonna say titled name is full uh, from full name I put 20 over here I'm gonna say it's gonna be defaulted and uh, uh, then go through the rest of the settings so I'm gonna say uh, when titled name is created I have a title name and a surname name is passed to full name and sur uh, name and surname is passed to full name and the title is copied and when I'm calling I'm gonna say calling title and I'm gonna print this which is the whole thing is going to get printed on a on a screen now in here instead of uh, uh, callable name I'm going to create uh, the title name so it's exact same tester that I have done for that um, and running running it will work exactly the same way I'm not going to go through it step by step you know exactly how it's done so um, when I run it and as you see Mr. Fred Flintstone is being called over here uh, and it's copied and assigned and everything seems to be working properly. Are we okay with this? Again, it doesn't matter how many sequences of inheritance that you have, if the derived class, the most derived class, if the most uh, derived class does not need rule of three don't do it okay it's the exact same thing like the other one the other ones need rule of three they are implementing them they're gonna it's gonna work perfectly and uh, we have no uh, problem with any of that uh, so now that we have done this uh, here comes your challenge what you need to do to, to, to learn this properly what you need to do you see this titled name that I have over here make this title dynamic so it becomes a dynamic thing it needs resources apply the rule of three for it and see if you can actually do it properly so make this so as as practice make m um, title DMA and then uh, create the rule of three and you're done any question oh I'm saying shall we continue my apologies I will say answer answer any questions Go ahead, Misato. Go ahead, and oh, sorry. So full name is a uh, derived class of the name. The name, right? Yes. So this case, the title name is the derived class of the full name. That's right. In that case, can we just the uh, specify the base name as just the full name, or we have to 
call the name of the constructor, the name of the rule of three. Which one should we call? You only take care of, see, rem did you take care of name being copied in full name? Mm, no. Hmm? Huh? Did you, but take, it really... did you take care of the name being copied in full name? Yes. Yes, so why do you care? Oh, okay, okay. Then that's why you have to call just the so, full name. Exactly. So this is, how, uh, Misato, this is how you need to program. Mm -hmm. What you do, you start programming, and every single thing that you program, you, you make it self-sustained, so it does everything within itself. So you don't need to worry about it later. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Thank okay. you. Okay, so if you do it like that, then it doesn't, you, no, no matter what, you're going to be okay. Uh, I'm going to kill your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, Gyeong Krok? <laughs> I'm sorry. My apologies. We are all Canadians. Our names are very difficult to pronounce. You had the question. You said you have a question. And Rehat has a question too. Or they just came in and they saw the uh, yes and they just clicked on yes. They don't know what the question was. Rehat, do you have a question? Rehat, pray the car. Do you have a question? No, sir. No? <laughs> you just came in and clicked yes, right? Same thing as Abdul. Abdul was going around. What is going on? Somebody said yes. All right. Uh, all right. So uh, last call. If anybody have any question, please let me know. Anybody have any question? Activate your microphone or start typing over there. That's the Rive classes with the resource, ladies and gentlemen. And um, uh, we are up to date and everything is done, so we know exactly how they are. Um, please, uh, uh, what I say? My, my does M title not? I cannot I cannot understand my does M title not count as research my mic wasn't working okay so I'm trying to understand yes it's not it, because it said it's an array it's it, it everything the whole array is inside the class so it doesn't need a resource that's perfectly correct that's perfectly correct because it's a character, not a character pointer. Everything M title has its within its scope. Perfectly correct. And Phil, thank you for the answer. Anyone else? Anyone else? Abdul is typing. No, an int wouldn't be, but an int pointer would be. Uh, yes, let's put it like that. Um, Misato, you are saying only pointer. In our, in our stage of programming, yes, only pointer. But, yeah, I don't want to make it complicated. So let's say at, at our stage is pointer, but between you and I, what if I had over here something like uh, uh, OF uh, F stream file? If I had something like this, this file is not a pointer. It's actually uh, an object that I create. Uh, Mr. Uh, activate your microphone so we talk about this. Yes. Okay. You see, you see now in here I added F stream. Uh, yes, F string, now, F, yes. F string I, is a file, correct? Mm -hmm, yes. Okay, where the file is kept? Uh, inside your, like... No, it's on the hard drive. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> right? Is it inside yes. the class? No, it's on the hard drive. Okay. That file is only accessing it, correct? Mm -hmm. So that becomes a class with resource too. Oh, I see. See, when we say it's only pointer, because that's the only examples we've seen, if I say over here, integer pointer 
array? Yes, that's a class with resource. Because this is an array, it's going to be a pointer and it's going to be referring to an array outside of the scope of the class. That's obvious. This is what we do. But there are many other things that when you do in computer programming that are not inside the scope of your class. There are things outside of the class and the class doesn't have complete access to them. Mm -hmm. Those things, they need rule of three to see how they're okay. going to handle it. Are we okay? Yes, got it. And Thank I you think so much. my computer is going bananas because it keeps going back and forth with the screen. Let me just remove this so people don't get confused. All right. Okay. Anyone else have any question? Anyone has any question? Any question? One. Any question too? Any of you guys have an appointment with me today? If you have any appointment with me today, um, I have to run and take an injection and come back. If if uh, I make it on time, I'll talk to you. Otherwise, I may be delayed coming to our appointment. Uh, have yourself a beautiful day, and uh, uh, we will talk soon. Bye, everyone.